Hey, what's going on? It's Doug Cunnington here, and this is The Doug Show. I'm interviewing Charlie, and you might remember Charlie from a couple episodes last year, back in 2020. So he published about 525 articles in eight months for his first site. He started it right in the beginning of the pandemic, April of 2020. And it, towards the end of the year, in December of 2020, he started another site, and he has 875 articles in about seven months. So he's a publishing machine. He's been able to do a ton of work, even while working a full-time job. And the cool part is he's getting into Mediavine. I believe he was accepted, but we'll let Charlie um, tell us all about that. So he was accepted into Mediavine for that first site. So I'm going to bring him on here. Charlie, how are you today? Hey, Doug, thanks for having me back on the show. And for those who've been following me along, this is uh, Charlie from Passive Priority, which was the YouTube channel I started after going on Doug's show. Uh, he did advise that it made sense to give people updates and, you know, month by month income reports on the sites. <laughs> right on. Well, for the people that, that don't know you yet, Charlie, they should go listen to the other episode, of course. But can you give us a little intro right now? Sure. So I had a little experience um, about seven or eight years ago building websites, uh, nothing close to a niche website. It was more of a cost per action type of website. Uh, I ranked those websites with the old school SEO tactics and made some decent money, but it was very short term type of projects. So when the pandemic hit uh, March and April of 2020, I kind of got back into researching about websites. So as I mentioned prior, I looked up YouTube channels. And I became a follower of Doug's YouTube channel and his show, as well as several others. You know, April 2020, I built a website. I started publishing some content, wrote roughly the first 50 or 60 pieces of content, uh, watched it slowly grow to only a couple of visitors a day, and then got into outsourcing content and scaling it up from there. Uh, so I've been tracking this journey for the first site closely with Doug. And uh, several months later, in December 2020, I built a second site with the intention of just pumping out a ton of content. So I right now have two websites. Both of them have a lot of pieces of content, which we'll discuss today. Um, one of them's in Mediavine. The other one I'm trying to get onto Mediavine, which will require 50,000 sessions. But at this point, my goal is to publish a lot of content. I kind of stick to the process of focusing on informational content versus affiliate content at this point. Uh, my first site does have some affiliate pieces of content just from when I first started. I wasn't really sure which direction I wanted to go. Um, but the second site is focused on all informational content. Perfect. So the flow of this interview is going to work like this. We're going to talk sort of about the broad overview of working online, and then we'll dive into each of the sites individually so that we, mostly me, uh, I won't get confused when we when we talk about them, and then we'll hit some other broad topics. So, I'm curious if you found this business, the affiliate marketing and a content website, online publisher, however you want to describe yourself, uh, anything different than what you expected from when you were starting, say in April or May of 2020. Sure. So back in April, I remember setting the goal to myself: I want to build. Um, a passive income source through this website that's going to generate, you know, four figures of income a month. So I wanted to get to a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a month in passive income. So as I learned about these websites and understood how content took time to rank, I knew it wasn't going to be a short term type of success story. I knew it was going to take time, but it is very difficult in the beginning to put up pieces of content and have it get small amounts of visitors make, you know, pennies here and there with Amazon affiliates, you know, maybe make some money with these Oak ads when I was first able to join. It's a tough journey, but I think looking back on this point now, um, you can really see how these sites take off a year from, from when you really launch them and it just takes time. And the most important thing you can do is those dark months when you're not sure what to do or, um, how to grow your website, just continue to keep publishing content. It seems to always be the answer that, that solves your problem. And the other part to that as well is stay motivated. Um, you know, following YouTube channels and people in the community and staying connected with what's going on, it's definitely extremely motivating. And I think that's another big piece to always say, you know, keep pushing forward, keep publishing content. Other people are having success. 
um, this business works. I mean, it's a great business model now that I think about it and see the money come in at this point. There's minimal upfront cost. If you're not going to outsource content, you're going to write the content yourself. There's almost no upfront cost. Um, so the business model makes sense. And then once you start achieving those levels of those passive income checks coming in every month from you know ad networks and Amazon affiliates and maybe other affiliate networks, um, it really gets exciting. And I didn't let you share any results. So can you let us know how much each of the sites are earning and the traffic per day, for example, just so we can get a gauge of the success that you've had so far? Sure. So the first website, uh, which was launched in April 2020, that has 525 uh, articles, is now generating roughly 40 to $50 a day between uh, Mediavine ads and Amazon affiliates. So this month, the site's expected to make roughly $1,400 in earnings, um, which has just been a huge journey. And I've come a long way from making you know $20, $30 a month in the beginning to now I'm achieving that type of income. And that is from roughly 2,000 visitors a day. So 2,000 uh, sessions and roughly 90, 95% of that is all organic traffic from Google. The second site, which was launched in December of 2020, has 875 pieces of content, all informational. Um, currently, that site is not monetized, which was my intention. And then once I achieve 50,000 sessions, I will be applying to Mediavine. Uh, the current traffic for that website is just around 1,100 sessions per day. Uh, and that is like 95% organic as well. Um, that site is growing very fast, just kind of on a straight upwards curve right now. Um, where the first website was kind of a slow crawl to get to exciting numbers. So second site's moving along a lot quicker. Obviously, publishing a lot of content helps with that. But I think just from learning a lot of the different tricks and keyword phrases from my first site um, has allowed this website to move a little faster. Okay. And before we get into the details for each of the sites, now that you've hit that four-figure per month mark at 1400 and it, it sounds like you know things are going to continue to grow and i would guess if you actually monetized the second site you probably would be making a few hundred dollars more um just right <laughs> immediately but do you have any new goals on your horizon so i think the short-term goal is to get the second site to mediavine which would be around the 1600 to 1700 session per day mark so once that site is monetized with Mediavine, I would like that site to hopefully get to the $1,500 a month goal. And then the medium term goal is to have the two portfolio websites combined generate you know, $4,000 per month in, in passive income between the ad networks and Amazon affiliates. Uh, so that's where I'm kind of sitting now. There is no intention to build a third site at this point. Um, you know, I, I've always made that content goal of getting to 1,000 articles on the second site. I'm 125 articles away. Um, so in terms of goals, it's really just content and getting to that cash mark between these two sites of four, four grand would be great. Awesome. Yeah, I think you're, I mean, you're probably extremely close to that looking at the trajectory of both of the sites, actually. I feel like you're going to hit that pretty quick and then surpass it. So let's dive into some of the details for site number one. So like I said, we're going to sort of treat them separately. So you mentioned that there are about 525 articles. Are you currently publishing more content there? What's the situation for just the content in general? Yeah, so as Doug uh, kind of previewed in the beginning of the show, this site had 525 articles put up in the first eight months. Um, and actually at some point a few months ago, I believe it was February of 2021, I actually removed like four or five articles that just weren't high quality didn't really target a keyword. It was kind of when I was really at the beginning of building a site. So I kind of trimmed some content there. And then I wound up actually adding back another four articles in the last 30 days, just because I didn't publish any new content at all this year. And I figured if I was gonna be joining an ad network, I wanted to show them that the site was still updating and still adding new content. So I did only add four articles for the year, which got me back to that 525 article mark. But at this point, once the site's been monetized with Mediavine and it's making money with Amazon, I kind of want to see where it grows in terms of its RPM to see if this is a niche worth investing more of my time and more of my money. Um, it is great that I have a second site and watch that grow as quick as I can to get it monetized with a premium ad network. 
but I think I'm going to kind of compare the RPMs between two sites. And at that point, I'll decide which site I want to grow further. Putting up content still is going to take time to rank on my first site, even though it has gained some authority. But that first site is almost like less of a broader niche versus what I'm doing in my other project. So if I'm going to be investing more time and more money into that site, I'm going to have to think a little bit more closer about what's the next area of my content push. Like what category am I going to want to branch out more from? So I'm just kind of gathering data right now and trying to understand the numbers to see what makes the most sense to um, put more money towards. Have you gone through and looked at either improving or like adding FAQs or amending the articles that are already published? I haven't done anything for any of the articles to amend them at all um in terms of monetization or adding frequently asked questions to try and maybe capture some more keywords the one thing i did do was for some articles that were ranking second or third for like an informational type of query i tried to just format the article a little bit better so it'd be picked up for the snippet and also the other thing i did do across the articles was going through the titles and adding like a buzzword at the end of it for example if it was like an informational question I'd put in parentheses solved at the end, or you wouldn't believe the answer to try and make it a little bit more of like a clickbait type of title, which I did see a slight increase in clicks from that. So I think that was a good move. That was only a modification to the title of the articles. Okay. Very good. And I guess, do you think that would be a good route? Cause I know you were saying, Oh, it'd be great to, you know, add a little more content, but at the same time, when you have, you know, 500 and you've learned a lot over the past year, there's probably areas where, like you said, you'd add FAQs or something like that. So is that something that you think that you'll do in the next, say, 12 months or something like that? So I think what I'm going to have to think about is what type of labor do I want to put into the site? Is that going to be me going through the website and adding this content? Am I going to hire someone to go do that? And what is the benefit of it? Um, some of my articles are, I think, are bringing the max amount of traffic could bring in for that keyword, and they're doing fairly well. But then I have these other articles that are so competitive, and never, I'm never going to win the top three position anyway, unless I grow into this huge website. So adding extra efforts there, I don't know if that'll make sense either. So kind of the point I'm at now is, if I go back and edit these articles, well, if I spend that time and money into just publishing new content, is that almost just kind of cancel out the efforts either way? Um, it's definitely something I should do. And I think at the minimum, I'm going to go through and maybe just throw in some more affiliate links here and there, but, uh, it's definitely something I'm kind of gauging right now in terms of how to grow the site and, uh, potentially make more money from it. It's always a tough one because like you said, the opportunity cost and basically, I mean, technically you could do both, but it'll cost, (laughs) it'll cost more. And I think, you know, a lot of times I've tried to test it on a small scale. So, maybe the the top 10 articles that are ranking the best like oh what if if i throw some faqs on there like does that bring in a little more traffic is it getting more impressions like is it a positive response and then i try to figure out if that's going to like scale in any way but i mean i think you know i get questions a lot about if people should spend time trying to fix their worst performing articles I usually say no, because even if you do really well, it still could be a poor performer versus like spending time on the things that are, that Google already likes basically, where you're just like following, following along with with what's working. So I don't know. Is that helpful at all? Not that you were asking. Yeah. It's almost like, I feel like, especially with my first site too. And I feel like a lot of people can relate to this. You kind of struggle with the keyword research in several spots and maybe the article you went after wasn't like the good one to go for. So yeah, if I spent some extra effort to change around, that might be good. But at that point, like it might be easier just to write the new article, understanding keyword research a little bit better. Because I have so many articles on that site that just are way too competitive. Like they're not going to rank. And I didn't know that at the time. I was like, oh yeah, when the website's two years old, I'll rank for all the competitive keywords. Like probably not. Like it's a very difficult thing to achieve. So I think that's kind of what I'm having a tough time of coming to coming to a means with like, do I want to spend that time on content that I just know will never achieve this position I want it? (laughs) Right. So for link building, I know you you did a little bit of link building for this first site. So yeah, what was that in the beginning and what's the plan right now for link building? Yeah. So for the first site, I really want to try and save money um, 
on links because I wanted to focus more on building content. So I did my own manual outreach in the beginning. And I would actually reach out to other websites in my space that weren't niche websites. They were more actual businesses in um, that field. And I think I talked about this in one of our interviews before, but I would pretty much say, hey, this is a really good resource for your site. You know, we're located in the same area you are. You know, would you mind referencing our site? We'd be happy to give you guys a review or kind of talk about what you guys do and kind of make it like a mutual uh, partnership and start building a relationship. Um, so that's something that I did in the beginning and I did get some real quality links that like no one else would achieve. And actually one of those relationships wound up turning out into a longer term relationship with one of those businesses. I'm actually using their services next week for that niche, which is kind of funny. Um, and then I did spend some money also on building some niche edits. So I found a good niche edit provider that was willing to find other sites in my space, reach out to the website owner and place um, some of my articles and link them on existing articles on other sites. Um, I didn't spend too much money on it because I did want to focus on content, but I did probably wind up getting roughly 20 to 30 uh, niche edits from that initiative. How many links did you get from your own outreach to, I guess, companies in the niche? I would say companies in the niche, probably around 25. And that was probably about two and a half months of work where I was emailing maybe 100, 150 businesses a week. I think another thing that worked out nicely was at the time for when my website was only X amount of months old, I had a lot of location-based articles that were associated with the area of my outreach. So when somebody went on that site, they were like, oh, it's just like a local blogger talking about you know locations in our community. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, okay, let's link back to them. I think if I did that now, I'd probably have less success just because I have so much more general informational posts that are broader. But I think at that time, it actually kind of worked out well as my site was ramping up. I focused on a good topic that outreach would do really well with. Okay, great. And I think it probably took quite a bit of time and a lot more brain power than just blasting out a ton of emails, even though you were emailing quite a few people, um, you know, several per day, it sounds like at the rate that you were contacting per week. But those kind of links, like you said, your competitors are probably not going to land those and they were geographically relevant. So, I mean, do you have any tips for people who maybe think that their niche doesn't have anything like that or just generally networking within your niche? Yeah. So in terms of tips for securing these type of links with businesses, you think that maybe your content on your site is going to be the reason that they want to link with you. And I was having not the best success rate with that. So I went one step further and said, let me spend an hour, an hour and a half going through some of these businesses And why don't I write a review like post, but rather than focusing on products, I'll talk about these local businesses. And I only mentioned about five or six businesses in my first post, started outreach, and then realized people were responding at like a 30 to 40% clip for the local businesses in my area. And then I started adding some more businesses to that list and really growing it. But these businesses were so like honored to be on these, you know, review lists talking about their company. It was free advertising that in one case, the site actually linked back to me and then also posted that review on their social media pages, on their Facebook, on their Instagram. I was like, look, we were mentioned in this, you know, website's article, Um, you know, make sure you check them out. And then people were like liking the post and putting comments, congratulations. So it's kind of funny how it kind of went that whole uh, next level with that type of outreach. Um, But I was also securing a longer term relationship with these places, which was great. Uh, so I was happy to to make those type of posts and definitely saw a higher uh, success rate doing that. Perfect. And from the the other side, I've mentored some companies like local around here, and there's like a startup accelerator that I've worked with. They want to have coverage. They want to get press in some capacity, and they're trying to run their business. So if it's like a cupcake bakery or something like that, they're working on their craft and trying to do that. They may not have a marketing background. So they're trying to figure out how can I get coverage? How can people talk about me? So if you're 
like doing it and like showing them how you've done it before in the past with the review. And then you reach out, like you're just coming up with something that they would pay a company to do. Right. So there's marketing agencies that would like help them get in front of other bloggers and influencers or whatever. So if you come up and just send them the email and like lay it out, here's what I can do. Here's what I need. Want to build a relationship. It makes perfect sense that they're going to jump all over it. So I think people just maybe have to be a little creative to figure out the right approach and and you adapted. So it didn't quite work at first. And then you, you thought about why someone would want to work with you and then you, you brought that to them. So yeah, I think that's a great way to do it. Awesome. Now, did you keep up that, uh, process with the link building? So I did not. And the reason was, and I, I think I showed it to you in my traffic chart too, is things were just really slow from the months of like August to December of that year. So, you know, part of me started creeping in, oh, maybe this is a failure. This is not working. Um, let me slow down with the outreach. Let me stop spending time and money there. And let's see how the content grows. But I did stop building links and stop doing that outreach, which is not what you're supposed to do. I mean, in the beginning, it's going to be lonely. It's going to be a dark age. I mean, a dark age in the beginning with building traffic and gaining some traction. So I should continue to build links and do outreach, but I didn't. Um, so that's something I can also consider of doing going forward is as I want to grow the website further, maybe build some more authority and get those more high competition articles indexed and found. Maybe it does make sense to do more outreach, especially that the site's more established now, has premium ads on it. And who knows, maybe different types of companies will want to work with me now that ignored me and didn't answer in the beginning. And maybe some of those local companies um, I can kind of get away from knowing I secured some good links there already. Over time, did more uh, sort of natural links come in? I mean, at the traffic level that you're at, I mean, people would just run across your site. So yeah, this is probably the coolest thing because all my efforts are focused on my other project. So I only kind of check in on Ahrefs every once in a while for this site. I even I looked this morning, I got another DA 80 plus link this week, which is like the six I've received in the last two months. These large websites, I mean, the one that recently just did it was parade.com. They kind of wrote this post talking about, you know, location guide for best, you know, whatnot in that state. And one of my articles was linked and it's a DA 80 plus. It gets all these views, this article. I mean, parade.com gets over 50 million visitors a month. And that's just one of the many links I'm securing. Um, that one doesn't happen to be directly related to my niche. It's kind of more of a general type of site. But there's a lot of like, you know, bigger sites in my niche that get, you know, several million views a month that my articles are being mentioned and I'm being cited as like the source for that topic. So none of those were done by me with outreach. Those were all organic. And who knows how those are going to have an impact on the site going forward? Because a lot of these links were just secured in the last 60 days. So I'm sure those really haven't impacted rankings or anything because the site's been rather consistent just the last uh, two months of I've seen. So who knows? That, that might really help going forward. And I'm sure only more links are going to continue to come in as the site ages and gets more um, you know, awareness on the internet. You can't plan for that. you know. I'm sure that article was not one that you thought, oh, this is something where I can get a great link. Is it just some really long tail keyword sort of thing? It's funny. The first article that got mentioned on one of those big like DA 80 plus websites, I think I was trying like one of those writing services where it was like $12 per thousand words. And it was like really bad quality. And I was like, all right, I got to have to edit this. So, like one day I made myself sit down, edit that article, make it just like make sense and at least answer the main topic. And that's the article that's referenced on one of the sites. I'm like, of course, like the lowest piece of content is like the one that gets picked up. I mean, it's it's readable. It's fine. I went back to make sure I kind of touched up a few things just so <laughs> someone else stumbles upon it. They're like, oh, like this site is not credible. They're referencing this article. It doesn't even make English sense. Um, but that one got picked up there. And then another example for the article that got picked up recently this week um, was just like a location guide. It was something about doing something in an area. I kind of came up with a topic. It had zero search volume. That article itself gets roughly 25 to 30 sessions per day. So it's definitely a popular article on my site. And uh, that was one that got mentioned for for that roundup type of post. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah, you can't, can't plan for some of that stuff. Now, have you gone back to some of those individual articles and then added links 
from those internally to other posts because now they have like a lot of authority pointing to them. Yeah, that's actually a great thing that you mentioned. So I went back, I want to say at the beginning of the summer, so end of May, early June, and said, you know, as my site's potentially approaching its more seasonal type of time frame, let me use some of those articles that have this uh, link juice associated with them already and try and get some other articles found or kind of exposed to, you know, the authority on my site that it now has. So I had this big growth curve in the month of May. And I picked up some of those new articles that really started ranking and I linked them back to some articles that maybe weren't found yet or still stuck on like page two or page three. And some of those articles made no sense. They were on page two or three. Like I was the only article answering the topic. It just, I guess, really didn't have the time to rank or wasn't picked up. And there was quite a few of them that as soon as I tossed like three or four internal links, they shot up to like a top three result and started gaining, um, you know, several sessions per day per article. So I think I actually got about a hundred additional clicks per day just from building internal links, which was huge. And I didn't go crazy with internal links. I maybe only did roughly 50 orphan posts that didn't have anything linking to it. Focus on those posts and about 15 or 20 of those articles got picked up, started actually getting some traffic where it mattered. So those efforts were definitely worth it. So, you know, answer your question earlier, what things can I do to go back to this website and make it better in terms of modifying content, you know, maybe just do another full day or two of just building more internal links. Cause it really, really helped. Awesome. Well, let's move on to the, the second site. I know we're coming up towards the end of time here, unfortunately. So we'll, we're going to blast through it. Now you started this new site, the newer site in December, and you had a goal to publish a thousand articles. And I think, like eight months or something like that. So you're, you're pretty darn close. Can you tell us a little bit about the site and just how you were able to publish so much in a short amount of time? Sure. So just to introduce kind of what made me do the second project when my first website didn't really succeed. Um, Cause I know a lot of people always say, how can you invest more money and time to something that you haven't seen a proof of concept? Uh, so I really wanted to take away the things I didn't do well on my first website, which was keyword research. I wanted to focus more on how I can improve there and target more informational topics with the sole purpose of just bringing in a lot of organic traffic to the website. So in December 2020, I stumbled upon a website that I thought did a great job of just bringing in a ton of traffic through informational content. Um, it had over a million visitors a month, according to all those tools like Uber Suggests, Ahrefs, SEMrush. And I decided to join the same niche, which was extremely competitive, and just focus on building articles in the beginning that were topics not targeted yet by any other site. So, you know, really focus on the low competition keywords, start gaining some traction, and then longer term focus on some more competitive keywords. So I figured the only way to approach this to really, you know, get the ground, hit the ground running and really make an impact was to put up a lot of content. So I wanted to allocate... Um, a chunk of money towards building a thousand articles. I was roughly at that twenty to thirty dollar range for per article per thousand word article, and I put up I think like two hundred, three hundred articles just in the first ninety days. And at this point now, I'm approaching the seven to eight month mark. We're getting close to to August, and I am at eight hundred and seventy five articles. And it's really just targeting these thousand worlds, thousand word response posts that are focused on answering the question, winning the snippet, bring in some traffic, and then you know moving on to the next piece of content, next topic. So I have a couple of writers working on this site. I do try and keep costs as low as possible without you know really hurting the quality of it. But this site's really come a long way and it's been a different approach. It's kind of taking everything I learned from my first site and just making it better, more efficient, you know, cutting out expensive costs where it's not needed and just putting out a ton of, of tough content. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a, a huge feat to, uh, to, to take on. And do you have like a set number of, or not a set number, but do you have like a, just a ton of keywords that you could keep growing the site? Do you think like it could be several thousand posts or what, what's your sort of vision? This site definitely has the ability to be several thousand articles. I'm never going to run out of topics to write. It's funny. When I first laid out the plan for the site, I came up with like several hundred keywords. 
And I was like, oh, this is so easy. The keyword research will coming up with a lot of good content that I know can, can rank. This is great. Now I'm at the point where I'm publishing faster than I can do keyword research. So it's not like there's not enough keywords. It's more just, I really want to pick like the home runs because my site has like a little bit of authority where I want to get away from the super low comp keywords, but I still want to get keywords that I can rank in a reasonable amount of time to grow traffic. But this is one of those niches you can get to the you know, 2,000, 3,000, even 5,000 articles and still have more to write, which is what makes this project so exciting. If I want to grow it long term, you know, two or three years down the road, or even if I want to sell it and have another investor get involved, I think the opportunity here is 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 endless. I think it can keep going. Um, and that's what makes it also really exciting. And why are you not monetizing at all at this point? So I did a similar thing for my first site in terms of going several months without monetization outside of Amazon, of course. And the reason I didn't want ads on the website is I don't want anything slowing down the page speed of my site as it's in that first initial like analysis stage by Google. Like I want them to look at my website, say, great, it loads fast on desktop, it loads fast on mobile, articles informative. Okay, here's the ranking position. I feel like once your site gains that authority and starts bringing in substantial amount of traffic, if the page speed slows down slightly, this is my theory, of course, then you're not going to get as penalized or maybe as uh, the throttle, as they say, for Google won't hold your site back as much, knowing you already established that credibility and authority. So I want to get to that point where I'm at 50,000 session, sessions per month before I monetize the site. You know, a lot of people would say that's crazy because I'm throwing a lot of money away. But when you're publishing this much content, the traffic growth is so quick that I may only miss out on a month or two of really premium earnings, where for a couple, you know, a hundred bucks here and there, I'm really allowing my website to get to a stage where I know ads won't slow it down and I can wait for a premium ad network to join rather than join like Google AdSense in the beginning, which didn't make much sense to me. Right. That, yeah, that's an interesting theory. I haven't heard anyone say it, but I mean, there's some, I would, there's some light logic. <laughs> it makes some sense. Um, the good thing is at this point, I think the ad networks have figured out how to work with the core web vitals and have the ads delivered in a way that doesn't slow the site down as much. There's always some lag, but from a core web vitals perspective, I think all the big networks have figured out like some way to um, like accelerate that process. So is that what you have seen, um, so far, by the way, just curious. I do agree with that. And I think if I really had to think about it, I'd probably put ads on the site. It's just in my point of view is if I want to get to a certain network, I don't really want to be the type of person that jumps between like two or three networks in like a six month time frame. Um, I don't think it's fair to the network. I also don't want it to interfere with my relationships if I want to get another site into there. So the fact that this website, I'm expected to grow to a certain traffic mark, you know, I want to join the first network and kind of stay with them for, for a substantial amount of time. Um, and then if I build a smaller site and kind of join a different ad network, um, you know, I want to make sure I have a relationship there with them and they're not just going to think I'm going to get up and leave. I don't know. Who knows if that really matters? It probably doesn't. But, you know, I still want to build relationships with these ad networks. Um, a lot of them pay really well and they can be a really important part of your business. So I think a long-term relationship is much is much respected by these people. And they are all really good. I mean, I've talked to Ezoic, I've talked to Mediavine. Both their customer service teams are phenomenal. Um, the fact that they will get on a call and like have a Zoom in interview with you when your site only has like 10,000 views a month in, in Ezoic's case was awesome. And then Mediavine now, their, their customer service back and forth of reaching out to me how to maximize RPM has been incredible. So they're, they're just great teams to work with. And I kind of don't really want to do anything to tarnish those relationships. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I have uh, like the opposite view of big companies. I'm like, oh, they're just out trying to squeeze us for everything that we have. So <laughs> I appreciate your uh, more balanced outlook on life, <laughs> just in general. <laughs> so that's that's good. Well, the the other part from a just a logistics standpoint and implementation, like you have to set everything up. And then what are you just going to keep like peeling that back out and then like reapplying to other networks and like going through all this stuff again. So just from like a standpoint of like, if you can afford to not monetize yet, it's great to just wait until 
you can get into the network that you want to work with because you have a good relationship and all that stuff. So totally cool. And I just know some people would wonder, hey, like if I had a site that was getting, you know, 1,100 visitors per day and was growing, I would definitely try to earn some money from it. But you're just being patient. Now, how much have you invested so far in the second site, if you happen to remember just like the general scope of how much? Sure. So with a thousand, and I could just doing the math. So the initial budget was for a thousand articles to spend roughly 20 to $25 per article. I know I said 20 to 30 because I wound up spending a lot of money on $40 articles, but the initial budget was $20,000 for a thousand articles. Um, at that point, I'm gro- getting close to that number at 875 articles. Um, but it seems like I'm already at that number just because I spent more money on some more expensive pieces of content. So I might wind up falling a little bit above that range in terms of what my budget wound up being for that site. But the way I think about it is even if I just get to a basic number of 50,000 sessions per month and the site can make a thousand dollars just from ads, I mean, at a 35, 40 times multiple, the sites were 35 to 40 grand. So I've almost doubled my money in terms of content and the site's also paying me a thousand dollars back in my pocket on a monthly basis. Now, with that said, if the site only achieved 50,000 sessions per month, I'd be a little disappointed, but at least in the short term, once I achieve that number, at least I'm starting to make some money back for my initial investment. And then my site has a valuation that's more than what I originally put in. Perfect. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's important to, for people to think about the valuation and of course you're not monetized yet, but one would assume that if you were monetized now, you'd at least be making, I, I would think enough where you're at a sort of a break even point. If you consider your investment so far, plus your valuation. So from a link building standpoint, I'm guessing you're not building any links to the second site. Is that correct? So I originally said that when I made my second site, I focused all on content. And then as kind of March and April rolled around, I wanted to start growing my awareness of my site on the internet. But rather than just kind of securing random links and paying providers to get niche edits, I actually paid a provider to provide me with guest post opportunities. So they did outreach for sites saying, hey, we have the site here. You know, we have Charlie's site. He wants um, a guest post about this topic. Are you willing to accept it? So it's kind of a little bit different than the traditional pay a service to just get you links. It was more, I paid a service to find me link opportunities. Once I had the link opportunity, they'd give me the price of what the you know webmaster requested. And I'd say yes or no. My service would write the article and then the guest post would be secured. So I've done a lot of that the past couple months. Um, nothing crazy. I mean, maybe six to eight links a month total, um, but they're really quality websites. I have several requirements for securing these links. Um, I hope to have anywhere between you know 30 domain authority to 60 domain authority. Um, they're getting at least 30 to 40,000 visitors a month, according to Uber Suggest and Ahrefs. And they just look like a natural website. Like if it has, you know, Ezoic ads, Mediavine ads, Ad Thrive ads, that's usually a great indication that it's a legit site making money and adding value to the internet. So those are like requirements that I kind of put in place. And I found a lot of good guest posts for my niche um, with those parameters and allowing my guest post provider to kind of do that outreach. Okay, cool. And I think like with the criteria that you laid out, like you would end up with higher quality links. I know a lot of the services, a lot of the people, the the owners that I've talked to, it sounds like, you know, they have their budget and it may be like 20 to $40 per like placement. So they just have like a database, they have their price, they have the general niche listed. And it basically that's like really cheap and, and, and low cost. So you end up with kind of cheap, crappy links a lot of times when you work with certain services. Um, so like I said, I think how you're describing it, it sounds like much higher quality and probably a lot more relevant to the niche in general, right? Yeah. If you're spending $20 on a link, I think you got a question. Either the person doesn't know the power of SEO that's selling you that link, or it's probably not going to make a big impact in your site. Um, a lot of the niche, a lot of the links I secured are really niche relevant. 
Um, I can kind of pick and choose what article fits well with that site too, based on what they talk about related to my niche. Um, I did do some brand awareness by doing just the website's name or the website's URL of some of the anchor texts, and also, you know, honed in on some of the articles that I wanted to secure a higher placement for that main keyword. Um, but yeah, these sites are really high quality. They look really good when the links are posted. Um, and I'm usually spending anywhere between $80 to even some cases up to $250 per guest post, depending on the quality. I mean, there's some sites I was like shocked they had a guest post. It was like a five, six letter domain that was like one of the main sites in the niche. And I, I could get a guest post for like $200 just because no one's reached out to them before, or at least no one reached out to them with this type of, uh, this type of phrasing the way that my guest post provider did it. Got it. Yeah, that's great. And you're, you know, you're going way beyond what most of the, the guest post provider or niche edit companies are paying just because their their pricing's low. They're trying to be competitive, and there's just a lot of sites that, I mean, either like you said, they don't know the power of like their links, or they're selling links like crazy, and it's you know kind of a crappy link, <laughs> just in general. So, okay, For sure. so as we're as we're wrapping it up here. I'm curious about like your project management approach in general. You've published um, a ton of articles in the last you know year plus. So yeah, how have you been doing that and managing it with a full time job and a lot of other things going on? Yeah, so with the 875 articles, that winds up being just about 900,000 words. And the reasoning is because I stick more to the thousand word mark because it is more of just an answer like response post to these articles. Um, which does make the editing a little bit easier because it's just not so daunting to go through, you know, two, 3,000 words for that post. But in terms of how I kind of work with my writers and where I'm at right now, um, I currently have two or three active writers on Upwork that are providing uh, articles associated just with the category, meaning that I give them the template, the template stays the same, topic just, just changes. Um, so those are continuing to come in. I get a four to five articles per writer per week. From that. And then I'm also using another one of those agency websites where I send them a list of 20 or 30 articles and they have several writers working on them where I'm pay me, paying a little bit higher because they, you know, assure quality and whatnot with those articles versus my individual writers, which I got at a lower rate. Um, but it's pretty much once I get those articles back, you know, I'm the one that's uploading the content. I read through it quickly. I confirm the S, you know, the H2 subheadings. Um, at this point, the format's pretty secure with these writers where they know exactly what they're doing, um, where I'm not really critiquing the format as I once did in the beginning of the project. Um, I add some high quality pictures that I pay for from deposit photos. And the article's uploaded with some internal links in there as well. Um, I definitely didn't do enough internal links in the beginning when I would post articles, just because I kind of feel like I didn't have other content on the website to reference. But the past three months, since I have several hundred articles to reference, I'm able to find plenty of articles that I can incorporate in there. And you know, I toss the links in there and I publish it. So there's no editor. There's no one else involved in the site outside of the writers that just send me the content directly. Um, you, know, you may ask, why don't I have them uploaded straight to my WordPress? The reasoning is just formatting. Um, you know, I really want my format done a certain way. The format that's currently working on my site is allowing me to win snippets, I think, at a little bit higher clip than if I didn't have that formatting, or at least helping me win those snippets a little bit faster. Uh, so I'm kind of sticking to the process that works. I'm keeping on the writers that are good enough to keep content publishing at a quality, at a high quality enough pace. And they're also really cheap. So it's kind of like I'm paying them amount of money that it's just worth it to have them on board. Even once I hit a thousand articles, I can you know think about how I want to keep them on longer term. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that you're using a really tight template, like over and over again, it's really easy for them to write and be you know, relatively inexpensive, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Cause it's almost like when I first hired them, their quality wasn't that great. And I feel like the quality wasn't great because they just had no idea what to do with formatting. Like they were very ambitious. They didn't mind doing the research. They found good information about it. Their English was by no means bad. It was just the format they came up with. The, they had no idea what they were doing in the space. So I was kind of hiring like newer writers to the you know niche website space. They didn't understand what type of content would rank for SEO. Kind of trained them with my format, and then once they caught on, now it's it's just easy to send them any topic, and they'll produce it exactly how I need. And I just make some small edits, maybe typos or capitalizations here and there. Got it. 
So I guess at this point, what do you see going on, say, in the next two or three months with the growth trajectory that you're on right now? Yeah, so for the second site, I mean, I really want this site to achieve several thousand visitors a day because if I can get to that, you know, four to five thousand visitor per mark month, I mean, that's easily over a hundred dollar days just in ads. Um, so I think in the next couple months, what I really want to focus on is as I approach a thousand articles, what type of articles can I publish that can maybe attract some of the traffic longer term when I have some authority? So two ways to think about that not just picking a high competition keyword, but like a high opportunity keyword, meaning it can satisfy several several questions on the internet or um, several searches that people might have and producing really quality um, content within that, meaning videos, pictures, tables, guides. So I think I'm gonna try and get away from the thousand word articles for this final 125 article push and focus on some more like pillar pieces of content that maybe aren't going to rank in the short term to bring traffic because I have those other articles doing that already. But these will be something that once I start gaining some authority, it makes my site look higher quality. It makes my site look more informative and more helpful to the user. And then potentially that can bring in the bigger chunks of traffic, you know, one or two years from now, which is good to have a good balance on the website for diversifying, you know, risk between topics. That's awesome. Yeah, it's like the, looking at the traffic graphs, it just looks like the, the growth is going to keep going as long as you keep publishing. It's pretty impressive. So well done on that. All right. Well, Charlie, where can people find you? Yeah, so uh, courtesy of Doug, I actually made a YouTube channel. It's called Passive Priority. Um, we're getting close to 1,000 subscribers, and I do post monthly updates on these two websites. So as things are getting really exciting for the second site because growth's just going so quick, um, I'm trying to put quick video updates, just talking about the traffic, talking about the growth and keywords with SERP Robot. Um, so you can find me on my YouTube channel there where it's just informational updates about these two sites, as well as some other you know helpful tips uh, in the space that I've learned. And I also blog on, uh, on Doug's website and kind of give website updates from there. Uh, unfortunately, I just was a little busy with the last couple of months between the websites and some other personal things at home. But, uh, you know, I will be on Doug's website as well, posting updates and sharing some charts and pictures and helpful tips as I come across them. Yeah, we need like a, uh, a six month update or something like that just to keep people satisfied with a little more information. But yeah, I'll link up to all that stuff and your YouTube channel. So thanks a lot. And yeah, great, great to catch up. Great catching up, Doug. And let's do this more uh, more on a regular basis, at least not next month, but maybe something after just to keep everyone uh, in the loop and uh, see how things are going. All right. Sounds good.